All right, let's get it started on some pretty fun and interesting and even entertaining drills for the curveball and some for the screwball. I'm only going to show you one or two and talk to you a little bit about the changeup because I have a very strong opinion on how we need to develop that changeup. But right now, we're going to move right into the curveball. We're going right into an isolated knee movement to remember that we want to focus primarily on developing a good, clean, crisp wrist snap and isolating the movement of the body out and working on body angles. There's lots and lots of drills out there that have been established and used on a daily basis to be able to help correct mechanical issues. But we're assuming at this point in time you have a pretty fundamentally sound pitcher or you are fundamentally sound yourself and we're going straight into developing the wrist snap and the body angle. Do not hesitate ever to bring in any of those drills and adapt it to what you might need to do if you're experiencing some fundamental mechanically wrong things in developing your curveball, your screwball, or change it. This is a pretty common drill where we isolate the lower half of the body or the legs completely out of the motion so that the pitcher can work on the wrist snap only and the rotation of the ball, not having to worry about timing with the legs and it takes a lot of pressure off. They're not trying to cover a lot of distance. They're completely working on wrist snap and keeping that arm in tight and around that stomach and cutting across it like we want them to do in the curveball. You can notice that how they actually keep their form or their wrist snap afterwards and it's a good way for them to get used to what their body's doing. Uh, what their body's not doing, excuse me, and what their wrist snap is actually wanting to attain. Like I said before, we're going to get a little creative and things are going to get interesting and when we start coming and working with the curveball, you can use lots of different objects. The one we've chosen for this drill is a frisbee. You can take any kind of frisbee that you've got, one that your brother's got, take it out side. You're going to put the frisbee right out in front of you right here. You're going to take your thumb, put it underneath right in here on this edge with your index finger in there, much like a curveball grip, holding the, the hand right out in front and flicking it or snapping your wrist to really work on that same correct palm up wrist snap that you'll have in the curveball. Like I promised you, things are going to get interesting here in trying to develop the curve ball. I'm holding a volleyball. You can have a volleyball, a basketball, any type, a larger ball. You can use it in the winter. You can do this in the home in front of a mirror with rolled up socks. But I actually have my pitchers go ahead when they're learning the curve ball or if remember those tendencies we were talking about, them bending at the elbow and coming across to hit right in here. And what we do is we just take this ball and we shove it right up inside the shirt or on top of the shorts so that as they're coming down and snapping, they're trying to snap down and around that ball, getting that full extension of the circle and snapping around it. Yes, you can imagine. The best way I figured this out is three and a half years ago I gave birth to my son and I was still out pitching at that point in time and I developed the best curveball I ever had. So the idea and the light bulb went off in my head and that's why we're sticking the balls right in their stomach. You can call this the big bucket drill for the screwball. Remember, I've, I've really emphasized throughout the entire video, I'm a real leery of teaching a lot of the screwball because if it's not done correctly or if the girl, young lady depends or develops a fantastic one and depends on it a lot, it can put a lot of stress on an arm. What we've done is put a bucket right out in front of them where they're pitching. Remember that lead foot or the stride foot has to step way out to the other side to get their hips and their body to clear around that so they can do a crisp hard snap just exactly opposite of that of a curveball. Remember it's got to happen out in front and the legs or the buttocks has to be pushed out of the way to be able to snap and do the opposite action of a curveball which is known as the screwball. This can be a real uncomfortable situation at first for the young lady. This should not be something that they're worried about hitting. If you have a nice plastic trash can it's something that they're not normally concerned about or nervous about and can get that feeling of what stepping away is. This pitch really defies everything that you ever say that you're not supposed to do in pitching. You're always talking about driving straight out to your target, uh, not stepping away, not bending over, losing your balance, and those are all the things that you try to master in learning how to throw the screwball.
Remember, what we're trying to focus on in learning the knuckleball in this drill is work on no rotation in the ball. Sometimes you might have to start your pitchers anywhere from three to four or five feet apart as they start to master and actually feel what it feels like to have the ball leave all the fingertips at the same time without breaking the wrist, actually locking the wrist. You can back them up as a gradual process. And then the whole other thing that you add into this is when they start using their whole motion from a distance, that timing starts to become another issue and whether they feel like they actually have the ball. But it's an easy way, especially after a long day or a tough workout, have them come up and start working on four or five of them, especially with some of the younger ones. It gives them something to work on. Locking that wrist and pushing all the fingertips off at one time. They can see instant feedback and it's not something that they're using a lot of energy in. They're really just working on no spin and no wrist snap. In this dead leg or isolated or soft leg drill for the change up, what we're really concentrating on working here is making their upper body look completely the same as all their other pitches. It's a real common tendency for pitchers to slow down their entire upper body. So I always concentrate on focusing, telling them, remember what your legs feel like after you've thrown six to seven, maybe eight games in a couple day period. I really don't like to have pitchers concentrate on throwing just change-ups for too long of a period of time, maybe five, ten at the most just so they work on their rhythm, and then I go completely right into them, having them alternate it with another pitch, either a drop ball, a rise ball, curve ball, but a ball that they're actually throwing for some speed, because if you don't do that, it's really easy for them to look like neon signs are going off of them when it's coming in a game. They have to learn how to make a quick adjustment from throwing any other kind of pitch in a change-up so that the batter doesn't see it before it's even coming.